Hello, welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for following me on my channel as I explore the amazing, incredible, wide world of pens. And yes, you see three of them spinning in front of you, held up by crabs, and they're all worthy of the attention the crabs are giving it. And Mr. Sizemore also loves looking at them. Ah, three pens for my four eyes. Beautiful. I like them. And he does. And so do I. We're going to explore these pens in more detail. But I felt that they needed to be shown to you in this light. I got some sunlight coming in. You can see some of the subtle details in those colors, but we need to explore these in detail because there are a lot of details to look at. They are Moonman T5s. I hope to have done this video a month ago, but the two, the blue and the green, took a lot longer to be delivered than I expected. But they're here now, and I'm ready to present them to you. So the crabs are going to spin around. They're all going to three wink at you. And let's explore in more depth. So the first impressions for me is it's a very smooth nib. The black pen, which I bought on Amazon, came in this Moonman frosted case, which we've seen on many, many pens. It has Moonman here at the corner in some molded in lettering. And we see the classic Moonman instruction manual, not Mahjong. It was in a cellophane sleeve not as crinkly as most and yes you can get your fingers in there very easily because they're pretty big openings there do the bud but this cutout design is is kind of strange it doesn't really match up to anything but it holds the pen in secure enough which is what it's designed to do paid about the same for this as I did for the ones that I got on AliExpress so the cost has been you know, in the mid-20s, plus or minus a few U.S. dollars. And it does look good when it comes out of the case. So you have every right to ask, Chris, why do you have three Moonman T5 pens? Well, there's a number of reasons. But the number one reason is because I can. And because I'm a collector. And I enjoy collecting. I enjoy collecting many versions of the same model of pen. Pen BBS really epitomizes that, as I have multiples of all the models in various colors, different nibs, etc. The other reason is, is when I ordered this, I really wanted to do a review on this a month ago, but I didn't have all three pens. In fact, I just got these recently in January of 2022, about the middle of the month. These two from AliExpress took over two months to arrive, which is very, very unusual. It's the first time that's happened to me with AliExpress. For some reason, they sat in limbo to when they were turned over to the carrier in China to the when they showed up at the airport in JF, JFK in New York City. But once they did that, they got delivered pretty much immediately. This pen from Amazon took uh, two weeks transit from China to U.S. and again showed up very quickly in the mailbox once it arrived in the States. It cleared customs and was delivered. These are all Moonman branded, so they precede that change that they did from Moonman to Mahjong. Here's that Chinese listing of that change. This, you know, prompted by, required by, the fact that Caveco has trademarked Moonman and is enforcing that trademark uh, around the world. So they're just changing their name, but it'll take time for everything to filter through. These are three different looking pens. Obviously, the matte black one is a unique look. And if you're going to do something unique, it would be interesting to do some type of dark coating on the uh, trim but you know all of them have rhodium trim which is fine also 
I do have a number of pens with black trim and black pens. And that little design element, fireworks, hand done on those two pens. The middle one is blue, the end one is green here. Just really sets them off. That's kind of unique, at least to my eyes it's unique. I don't have any other pen with that type of design elements on it. So that's the other reason why I got two of these in the color. So I could show you what the color looked like. It's hand done, so each pen is going to be unique, but going to be similar enough in its look. So hopefully you can appreciate looking at three different versions of this pen to help you decide if it's a pen you would like to buy, and if you would, what version, what color would you get. While looking through AliExpress, I came across these, what I would call new Moon Man nibs. It looks like they did what Parker would do. They just removed Moon Man from the stamp, left an open spot. Other thing that's interesting is the extra fine nibs have no breather holes. Well, you may ask, how does the pen come apart? I'm known for taking pens apart. But in this case, I think the focus is, is how easy is this pen to clean out when you want to change inks or clean it out to put it away. The only thing I could do was pull out the nib and feed. I tried to unscrew what appears to be that nib collar in there. I tried to unscrew the section, but my guess is these are all glued together. And probably for a good reason. They don't want any leaks. If we go to the other end at the blind cap, and I have the blind cap totally unscrewed, you'll see those flat spots there. Hard to see in the black pen. But this Wingsung tool fits those flat spots. So when you find them, you could turn this counterclockwise to unscrew the piston filling mechanism, but I have no desire to do that now. You know, years from now, if I wanted to completely disassemble, if I wanted to lubricate, etc., etc., I could take it apart. But as a new pen, I don't have any desire to take it apart. So to me, when you're changing inks or doing something where you need to completely clean out the pen, it's more important to be able to pull the nib and feed. And that pulled out of all three of my T5s very easily because ink does collect in all of those little fins on that feed. So this way, these can be completely cleaned. And then you don't really want to use that piston to force water in and out of the barrel to flush the ink out of there. So you use a syringe. There's a little hole there, which is the same hole that uh, feeds the feed for the nib. We can put that in there and then use the plunger to put in some soapy water, fresh water, whatever you want to do. And eventually you'll be able to get every drop of ink out of the pen. So I think from a cleaning perspective, even though it may not disassemble as much as some people would like. It can be easily cleaned out the way it is designed. And Mr. Sizemore says, yep, I see it, and I agree. So we have a mostly darkened room to bring in the LED. And that definitely is a matte finish. The engraving on the cap band is done very well. You know, the way they have those grooves carved in there. Huh, I like it nice functional clip. If you look inside the cap, we'll see a plastic liner that extends all the way up to the top of the cap. I expect this pen will seal up very well. It's quality made. It's called a metal pen, but it's hard for me to ascertain if it's made out of metal. It certainly doesn't have that feel. It's a little bit heavier than an all plastic pen there may be like an aluminum tube that they have a covering on it but all in all i'm quite happy with this piston fill pen from mahjong we're going to look at the two caps because i think that subtle design fireworks design whatever you want to call it hand done so they're all going to be different just it's a nice subtle way i do like the matte black finish but I think this is probably going to be the more popular one. And we have the green and blue for your visual entertainment. So let's talk about what I consider to be somewhat of a miss on the engineering of this pen. I have the piston all the way down. 
it's turned this way as far as it can go and you can see that blind cap is opened up but you don't see the piston in the window it stops just short of the window that in itself is not an issue except when you fill the pen there's going to be a lot of air you're going to pull up before you start pulling up ink so you're not going to be able to get as full a fill as though the piston went all the way down to the section and then it only had to pull up air that was in the feed so now it has to pull up that whole amount of air that's in that ink window so why did they do that well a number of reasons number one it could be that they don't want to see the piston in the window just from an aesthetics viewpoint don't think that's the case but it could be number two depending upon how this piston is designed that could be the full travel of the piston that again limits the amount of ink you're going to get in unless you play around with it and filling and do multiple fills and the other answer could be is that the diameter of this ink window is smaller than the barrel so therefore the piston can't go past that ink window again all things that could have been designed around but they decided not to do that but overall the pen is extremely well made and i may be the only one except maybe for doodlebud that would mention the fact that that piston not going to make filling very efficient well so we look at the t5s one may say they resemble another pen that's fairly popular quite a bit more expensive and when i review a pen i'm not going to focus on what the pen resembles what the designers may have thought i'll talk about how that was executed and whether it meets its design criteria which is something i need to guess at based on the pen in my hand how it feels and how it writes so to me i don't understand how there can be so much emotional attachment over how a design came into being I think what the question you need to ask is, this is a pen that I like, is this a pen I'd like to write with, is this a pen I'd like to collect? That's really the question and that's what I try to address in my videos. And hopefully you find it interesting. So what you see in front of you are the two recent piston fill pens from two of the Chinese makers that I follow. This one I got quickly when I ordered it, the Hong Dion N1S. And I expected to get the T5 at the same time so I could review both of them together, but that didn't happen. So other than these most being piston filler pens, similar size length, visually, they couldn't be much different. You know, you got your silver rhodium plated trim, your gold colored trim. Well, they both share a cap band that protects the end of the cap, which I think is a great design. And I like it visually too. They both have your blind caps to activate the piston. They obviously have different finials, top and bottom. The NS1 only comes in this color, whereas the T5s you have, you know, this fireworks display as well as a matte black one. So you get more choices, but then they're all dark. So if you do like a light pen, the Hong Dian might be the one you want to do. So posted, they really take on a completely different look. The Mahjong is very large and big, and it doesn't post as deep. So if you're a poster, the Hong Dian certainly would be your preferred pen. They both have this ink window that sits above the threads of the section. You know, both those are very functional, very large ink windows, and, and that's always nice. This has a very long section. This has a more traditional section. Both of them work well for me. They both have number six nibs. But the primary difference to me is, is that size. I mean, this is definitely a very long pen. This is a more normal size pen and fits in the hand a little bit nicer. But both of these I would use on posted. So to me, let's look at it that way. So one capped. The Mahjong is still definitely the longer of the two pens. It, to me, doesn't add or subtract a lot. I can enjoy both of these in my hand. Aesthetically, I do like the design of the Hong Dion with this 
metal polished finial at the bottom of the barrel, which matches a little bit of what they did at the finial at the top of the cap. A nice two-tone nib here, but then this is all rhodium trim. Nib makes sense. All in all, even though these are both piston fill pens, they certainly have taken a different approach to the design. And I'm always amazed and surprised when two major Chinese pen makers come out with a similar pen at about the same time. I can only judge on what I see available through my buying channels, but you know, they obviously were fairly close. But the design varies quite a bit, which is what I would hope for and expect from these two makers. So here's a little bit more of a close-up look of that nib and section. And let's just look a little bit closer at these two nibs. I'm, I'm impressed with how they look and what they've done. I think the Chinese market, at least from what I can see, is putting more attention into unique details and designs. Obviously, Pen BBS is at the forefront of that. But the other companies are also following a similar approach. And, and both of these nibs write very well, feel good on the paper, good flow, you know, and a decent amount of ink on the paper. So obviously I'm going to pick a new type of ink. You know, made in Massachusetts in honor of New York. It's one of Nathan's ink that he made just for the Fountain Pen Hospital in New York City, which I bought when I was there. And of course, the full bottle, I spilled a little bit of it when I was playing around with it. Color card shows a nice dark brown. Very dark here when you put down a lot of ink. I don't see any real shading, but who knows. And the chromatography shows a lot of different colors in this ink, more than I would have expected. It shows a decent amount of water resistance here at the very bottom. There's a lot of different colors there. So I guess making sepia or brown requires a lot of color. So I've been shown a piston filling. We're going to see how we can fill this, watch it happen live. The piston is all the way open. So it's down as far as it'll go. We're going to insert it in until the ink level is up to about here on the section because as you draw ink out of the bottle, it's going to lower itself and you don't want the level of ink to get beneath this section or else you'll pull up air. So I've already, you know, cleaned the nib and feed because I took it out. So we're going to put it all the way in up to that level that I want and we're going to turn it in a clockwise direction and you can now see some ink come up. And there we've reached the top. So I'd say that's a decent fill. Yeah. And now we're going to see how it writes. The medium moon man nib. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, ink stuck to that uh, nib that we're going to have to clean off. I talked at not getting that big of a fill. You can see if you put the pen nib up, that ink window is devoid of ink. If you turn it around, you'll see the ink come down. So I could push the piston down, push out air, pull in more ink, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. We'll see if I like this ink and the pen combo and we're filling it more. For those of you that are thinking I couldn't let it be just a partial fill. So in this, uh, with the nib up, I brought the piston up, expelled all the air, and then when I started seeing ink come up here, I stopped, put it back in the ink bottle, retracted the piston and I think I got a pretty big fill now. As you can see there's no air left in there. A lot easier to get a full fill here in a piston filler than it is in a vac filler, that's for certain. So now we're ready for some editorial comments and an example of how this medium Mahjong nib writes. So the first impression for me is this feels like a quality pen. It has a nice weight to it. Fit and finish are excellent. Execution of the design is excellent. Piston filler works well. Yeah, it would have been nice if they would have had the full f movement of the piston, but you know, as we saw, it was easy to get a really full fill with just a 
simple second step. And that's really, to me, what a pen is all about. We'll give you the dimensions of the pen. The cat comes off in, in over two turns, which is a little bit much. Does the pen post? And the simple answer is, yes, it posts. A cap has a decent amount of weight to it, so you do feel it, and it does change the balance. Some people may find that okay, some people may not. To me, it's it's on the edge of being uh, back weighted, and to me, that doesn't enhance the writing experience. Cap is not quite as secure as one might like, but it will stay there if that's what you need to do. I think that section is a very excellent design. It feels good in my hand. I like that nice flare out at the end. And because it's a nice long section, you got a lot of movement, which I tend to do when I write as I move my fingers around. Try not to rotate the nib, but, you know, try is different from accomplishments. These threads are feel fine. They're not sharp at all. There is a step up there, but if you're holding it up here, you're quite a ways away from that nib. And if you want to, you could. So it's, it's to me... It's a good pen. I like what Moon Man has done. And you see I'm writing with the matte black one because that's the one I felt like inking up. You know, overall, it's all aesthetics and it's a question of what you find pleasing to your eye. And all of us have different eyes, so therefore what we find pleasing may or may not be what someone else does. There was an expression when I was growing up is one man's ceiling is another man's floor. We'll leave that speak for itself. Let's put that nib to paper and let's leak some ink onto the paper. So, the first impressions for me is it's a very smooth nib, very consistent writer. I think it's definitely medium. And it's moderately wet, not overly wet, not overly dry. And I think it handles this Noodler's, you know, Subway Sepia ink very, very well. I think you cannot hear how smooth it is. And there's very little feedback. And I, again, like I, I've mentioned, and, and I will continue to reinforce it, using a fountain pen as a personal experience. Each one of us is going to have a different experience. There might be some commonalities, but it'll be different. And <clears throat> this nib... I tend to like. I also like a slightly more feedback than this nib has, but it's not so smooth that you can't feel the paper. You do feel the paper, which is what I like. So let's rate this pen. And this is a tough rating for me because there's a lot of factors going into the rating, but it's going to get a 9.4. And it can just get one check for design, execution, build, and finish because it's done well. The nib gets a check. It writes well. And I would give it a check for the piston filler even though I would have designed it a little bit differently if that was uh, something I could do. But who knows what the constraints that they had when they put this pen and started trying to make it. So... It works, and it works well, and that's really what's important. So I thank all of you for watching. Hopefully you can find a pen that you enjoy writing with and doesn't create any emotional trauma. And again, a pen should do what it's meant to do. It should write, it should feel good in your hand, it should make you want to write. 
make you want to put ink on paper or another substance if that's what you would like to do. Hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying your life, enjoying every day. If you've reached the end of this video, and you notice how it starts up very well, and I did rotate the nib a little bit. So we're going to say bye. I have a few more videos in the works. Stay tuned.